This is the treasure of our company. Most people talk about the GPU. The GPU is important, but without a programming model that sits on top of it, and without dedication to that programming model, keeping it compatible over generations. We're now CUDA 13 coming up on CUDA 14. Hundreds of millions of GPUs running in every single computer, perfectly compatible. If we didn't do that, then developers wouldn't target this computing platform. If we didn't create these libraries, then developers wouldn't know how to use the algorithm and use the architecture to its fullest. One application after another. I mean, these, this, is really the, this is really the treasure of our company. Kulitho, computational lithography. It took us nearly seven years to get here with Kulitho, and now TSMC uses it, Samsung uses it, ASML uses it. This is an incredible library for computational lithography, the first step of making a chip. Sparse solvers for CAE applications. Kuop, a numerical optimization, has broken just about every single record. The traveling salesperson problem, how to connect millions of products with millions of customers in the supply chain. Warp, Python solver for CUDA, for simulation. QDF, a data frame approach, basically accelerating SQL, data frame, pro data frame databases. Um, this library is the one that started AI altogether. QD, QDNN, the, the, the library on top of it called Megatron Core made it possible for us to simulate and train extremely large language models. The list goes on. Uh, Monai, really, really important. The number one medical imaging AI framework in the world. Uh, by the way, we're not going to talk a lot about healthcare today, but be sure to see Kimberly's keynote. She's going to talk a lot about the work that we do in healthcare. And the list goes on. Uh, genomics processing. Ariel, pay attention. We're going to do something really important here today. Um, Ku Quantum, quantum computing. This is just a representative of 350 different libraries in our company. And each one of these libraries redesigned the algorithm necessary for accelerated computing. Each one of these libraries made it possible for all of the ecosystem partners to take advantage of accelerated computing. And each one of these libraries opened new markets for us. Let's take a look at what CUDA X can do. Ready, go! <laughs>
Is that amazing? Every, everything you saw was a simulation. There was no art, no animation. This is the beauty of mathematics. This is deep computer science, deep math, and it's just incredible how beautiful it is. Every industry was covered, from healthcare and life sciences to manufacturing, robotics, autonomous vehicles, computer graphics, even video games. That first shot that you saw was the first application NVIDIA ever ran. And that's where we started in 1993. And we kept believing in what we were trying to do. And it took, it's hard to imagine that you could see that first virtual fighter scene come alive. And that same company believed that we would be here today. It's just a really, really incredible journey. I want to thank all the NVIDIA employees for everything that you've done. It's really incredible. We have a lot of industries to cover today. I'm going to cover AI, 6G, quantum, models, enterprise computing, robotics, and factories. Let's get started. We have a lot to cover, a lot of big announcements to make, a lot of new partners that would very much surprise you. Telecommunications is the backbone, the lifeblood of our economy, our industries, our national security. And yet, ever since the beginning of wireless, where we defined the technology, we defined the global standards, we exported American technology all around the world so that the world can build on top of American technology and standards. It has been a long time since that's happened. Wireless technology around the world, largely today, deployed on foreign technologies. Our fundamental communication fabric built on foreign technologies. That has to stop. And we have an opportunity to do that, especially during this fundamental platform shift. As you know, computer technology is at the foundation of literally every single industry. It is the single most important instrument of science. It's the single most important instrument of industry. And I just said, we're going through a platform shift. That platform shift should be the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us to get back into the game, for us to start innovating with American technology. Today, today we're announcing that we're going to do that. We have a big partnership with Nokia. Nokia is the second largest telecommunications maker in the world. It's a $3 trillion industry. Infrastructure is hundreds of billions of dollars. There are millions of base stations around the world. If we could partner, we could build on top of this incredible new technology, fundamentally based on accelerated computing and AI, and for the United States, for America, to be at the center of the next revolution in 6G. So today we're announcing that NVIDIA has a new product line. It's called the NVIDIA Arc, the aerial radio network computer, aerial RAN computer, ARC. ARC is built from three fundamental new technologies, the gray CPU, the Blackwell GPU, and our ConnectX, Mellanox ConnectX networking designed for this application. And all of that makes it possible for us to run this library, this CUDA X library that I mentioned earlier called Arial. Arial is essentially a wireless communication system running on top of CUDA X. We're going we're to create, for the first time, a software-defined, programmable computer that's able to communicate wirelessly and do AI processing at the same time. This is completely revolutionary. We call it NVIDIA Arc. And Nokia is going to work with us to integrate our technology, rewrite their stack. This is a company with 7,000 fundamental, essential 5G patents. Hard to imagine any greater leader in telecommunications. So we're going to partner with Nokia. They're going to make NVIDIA ARC their future base station. NVIDIA ARC is also compatible with AirScale. 
the current Nokia base stations. So what that means is we're going to take this new technology and we'll be able to upgrade millions of base stations around the world with 6G and AI. Now, 6G and AI is really quite fundamental in the sense that for the first time, we'll be able to use AI technology, AI for RAN, to make radio communications more spectral efficient. Doing, using artificial intelligence, reinforcement learning, adjusting the beam forming in real time in context, depending on the surroundings and the traffic and the mobility, the weather, all of that could be taken into account so that we could improve spectral efficiency. Spectral efficiency consumes about one and a half to two percent of the world's power. So improving spectral efficiency not only improves the amount of data we can put through wireless networks without increasing the amount of energy necessary. The other thing that we could do, AI for RAN, is AI on RAN. This is a brand new opportunity. Remember, the internet enabled communications, but amazingly smart companies, AWS, built a cloud computing system on top of the internet. We are now going to do the same thing on top of the wireless telecommunications network. This new cloud will be an edge industrial robotics cloud. This is where AI on RAN, the first is AI for RAN to improve radio, radio spectrum efficiency. The second is AI on RAN, essentially cloud computing for wireless telecommunications. Cloud computing will be able to go right out to the edge where data centers are not, are not because we have base stations all over the world. This announcement is really exciting. Justin Hodar, the CEO, I think he's somewhere in the room. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for helping the United States bring telecommunication technology back to America. This is really a fantastic, fantastic partnership. Thank you very much. That's the best way to celebrate Nokia. Let's talk about quantum computing. 1981, particle physicist, quantum physicist Richard Feynman imagined a new type of computer that can simulate nature directly. To simulate nature directly. Because nature is quantum. He called it a quantum computer. 40 years later, the industry has made a fundamental breakthrough. 40 years later, just last year, a fundamental breakthrough. It is now possible to make one logical qubit. One logical qubit. One logical qubit that's coherent, stable, and error corrected. In the past, now that one logical qubit consists of, could be sometimes tens, sometimes hundreds of physical qubits all working together. As you know, qubits, these particles, are incredibly fragile. They could be unstable very easily. Any observation, any sampling of it, any environmental condition causes it to become decoherent. And so it takes extraordinarily well-controlled environments and now also a lot of different physical qubits for them to work together and for us to do error correction on these what are called auxiliary or syndrome qubits for us to error correct them and infer what that logical qubit state is. There are all kinds of different types of quantum computers. Superconducting, photonic, trapped ion, stable atom, all kinds of different ways to create a quantum computer. Well, we now realize that it's essential for us to connect a quantum computer directly to a GPU supercomputer so that we could do the error correction, so that we could do the artificial intelligence calibration and control of the quantum computer, and so that we could do simulations collectively, working together, the right algorithms running on the GPUs, the right algorithms running on the QPUs, and the two processors, the two computers working side by side. 
This is the future of quantum computing. Let's take a look. There are many ways to build a quantum computer. Each uses qubits, quantum bits, as its core building block. But no matter the method, all qubits, whether superconducting qubits, trapped ions, neutral atoms or photons, share the same challenge. They're fragile and extremely sensitive to noise. Today's qubits remain stable for only a few hundred operations, but solving meaningful problems requires trillions of operations. The answer is quantum error correction. Measuring disturbs a qubit, which destroys the information inside it. The trick is to add extra qubits and tangle so that measuring them gives us enough information to calculate where errors occurred without damaging the qubits we care about. It's brilliant, but needs beyond state-of-the-art conventional computing. That's why we built NVQLint, a new interconnect architecture that directly connects quantum processors with NVIDIA GPUs. Quantum error correction requires reading out information from qubits, calculating where errors occur, and sending data back to correct them. MVQ-Link is capable of moving terabytes of data to and from quantum hardware, the thousands of times every second needed for quantum error correction. At its heart is CUDA Q, our open platform for quantum GPU computing. Using MVQ-Link and CUDA Q, researchers will be able to do more than just error correction. They will also be able to orchestrate quantum devices and AI supercomputers to run quantum GPU applications. Quantum computing won't replace classical systems. They will work together, fused into one accelerated quantum supercomputing platform. Wow, this is a really long stage.